It is the August 19 to 21 turn. The Germans have destroyed the Belgian fortress at Liege. The first German army has undisputed control of Gent, a city beyond the victory line. The fourth German army is besieging Namur. And to win, the Germans must destroy the Namur fortress, which is right now in its last step. Any German attack against Namur using the Big Bertha event this turn will ensure victory for the Germans, even if they are repulsed. The event causes one hit automatically on any Belgian fortress that is attacked by the Germans. So it's really a matter of not drawing the Big Bertha event until after the second, third, or fourth German armies are activated. So we're about to start this turn and the sequence of the chits is everything in this game. So we pull the first chit from the cup and it's the first turned end marker of this turn. And that is a good result for the allies. We pull the next chit from the cup and it's the second turned end marker. And a third turn end marker would not be a bad result because it would force the Germans to activate the fourth army for an attack without the Big Bertha event. So now we pull another chit from the cup. And it is the Big Bertha German event and that will spell doom for the Allies. Next event. And it's Albrecht's fourth German army and the fourth army attacks Namur and it will be using the Big Bertha event. Onto the battle board we go one last time. Even if all German units miss, the Germans will still win because of the effect of the Big Bertha event. So we roll for all German units and the German cavalry and infantry units score two hits. And those two hits increase to three for the extra hit that the Big Bertha event causes on the fortress. And now we roll for the Allies. And the Allies score one hit. So the Germans even win the battle. Two hits are absorbed by the French infantry. And the third hit by the fortress unit, which was down to its last step. So the fortress of Namur is destroyed. And the Germans reduce one of their infantry corps. That's the end of the battle for Namur. The Germans destroy the fortress and achieve their third objective at this time during the August 19 to August 21 turn. So the Germans achieve a victory and the game ends right here. You see that only four chits were pulled from the cup during this turn. The German atrocity level was at three, so they had the luxury of activating at least one army in case that uh, they pulled three turned end markers before any German activation mark. The Belgian army was practically wiped out. On the map, the only units present were Guard Civic counters, and of those, only one had been revealed. Losses for the German third and second army were serious. The German 1st Army lost a weak core. The Allied side, neither the French armies or British Expeditionary Force, suffered serious losses. The two Guard Civic uh, counters that didn't make it to the map were a blank dummy counter and a weak Guard Civic unit. So that's the end of this playthrough series about brave little Belgium. It had been a while since I had done a playthrough and I did this one uh, in a uh, semi-narrative, but also uh, descriptive way of how the plays develop. So let me know if you like that format in the comment section. Brave Little Belgium. This is a game designed by Ryan Heilman and Dave Shaw, published by Hollenspiel. So I found that this is a game that is very enjoyable, solitaire, because of the uncertainties that the chit pool system brings. You don't know who is gonna move when, nor when the turn is about to end. 
And because of the chit pool system, play is pretty interactive. There's not a lot of dead time. And this is a game that also, because of the randomness of the chits that are pulled, has great replayability. So I hope you enjoyed watching this playthrough series as much as I enjoyed making it. And I hope to see you in the next one. This is Tuka Joe, signing off for now. Thanks for watching.